So I want to bring forth a guy who kind of kicked my butt when I was playing small. And I want you to, to, to listen to him for the next 30 minutes or so as we go on this interview, because I think you're going to get some really important things out of this. But what I want to share with you are some of the people that inspired me to go bolder. And I'm hoping that some of this will rub off on you too, so that no matter where you are, you also can go bigger and bolder in terms of our collective instruction manuals for Spaceship Earth. Patrick Grove is a really unique character. So I've known him as a friend for over a decade, and I'll tell you one story about him. I actually wrote about this story in my book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. So I was in Starbucks, and I was working on something like small. To me, it was a big deal, but it was small. It was basically an optimized blog so that I could, I could earn uh, income as a teacher, right, from affiliate marketing. Sounded cool to me back then, but uh, here's what happened. I walk into Starbucks to sit down and start writing down my idea of the blog, and I see Patrick, and I'm like, oh man, Patrick is going to freaking love this thing I've totally nailed on how to just like stream organic search traffic to a blog so that you can, you can get autopilot affiliate revenue. And I go up to Patrick, and he's scribbling on a piece of paper, and on that piece of paper, I see the number 100 million on it, right? So I ask Patrick, what's going on here? What, what, what are you doing? I was fascinated, and he said, and he puts his pen down, he goes, <clears throat> Vision, I'm trying to think about how I can generate $100 million in a business in one single year. And I'm thinking, okay, he's probably not going to be interested in my blog idea. <laughs> so I go buy a cup of coffee, I sit down, and I just listen to him, and I'm slightly skeptical. I mean, who the hell, like in my mind, like a guy sitting in Starbucks in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, is not going to generate $100 million in business in one year. But the funny thing about Patrick is, he has this habit of setting a vision and then making it real. Patrick went on to create a series of companies called iCar. He bought a small car website, raised some venture funding, merged it with other car websites, rolled it into a giant company called iCar, and took it public in one year at a valuation on the Australian Stock Exchange of 100 million. But here's the crazy part. Patrick didn't stop there. Patrick went on to create multiple, multiple, multiple $100 million-plus companies. He uh, launched Malaysia's biggest media company with Kai Lee, who's a former AFES speaker and a former Mind Valley employee. He launched Malaysia's biggest property company, and checked, if you saw the screen earlier, he sold it to Rupert Murdoch for $700 million. And he went on to just launch multiple companies, and now, his next goal is a billion dollars, and he's doing that with iFlix, which is the Netflix of the developing world. So he's creating literally a Netflix for countries like in Africa, countries in Southeast Asia, where local programming can be accessible to people who don't have television sets but have mobile phones. And in the process, he's become, last I checked, the seventh richest man in Australia. But he isn't driven by wealth. I, I know Patrick. What I love about the guy is that he's really humble, he's really loving, he knows how to have fun. He's sort of like a Richard Branchonist type character. But what I love most about Patrick Grove is how for 10 years, he's been kicking my butt. Because every time I feel, damn it, Vision, you've done it, I see another news article about Patrick Grove, and I'm like, I gotta go bigger. But, uh, but, you know, the reason why Mindvalley went from a simple online publisher to now building global universities is partially because of the influence of men like this. See, we all rub off on each other, right? We all are influenced by each other. The reason why I want to keep elevating the level of people in this tribe is because if I don't, the level starts dropping. So, every year, we increase the bar, and we increase the bar, and we increase the bar so that we can all elevate each other. The same effect that Patrick Grove has on me, constantly kicking my butt to go bigger, is what I want to have happen in this tribe. So you'll see this leveling up happening at every AFES, happening at Mind Valley University, happening from new people we come in, happening from the people we bring on stage. And with that, let's bring on stage Patrick Grove. <laughs> so, um, so a couple of questions, Patrick. First. What was going on in your mind there? Like, like this journaling thing you do on a piece of paper where you plot on taking over the world? Is that like, where did you, explain to us what's happening? You know what, just listening to that, that intro just now, I feel like I need to apologize to you because that eight years ago when I saw you in Starbucks, uh -huh. I, didn't, I didn't ask you about your 
blog website that you were trying to build. Yeah. So, so you know, I'd love to know more about that blog website and, and <laughs> how you optimize SEO traffic. And, and um, anyway, maybe we can talk about that <laughs> over lunch. But, you know, one of the things that... <clears throat> anyway, man, it's so good to see you here. Yeah, and you too, man. I Vision left, is one of those I left friends, the new look with the flower in there. You, you, <laughs> we're in Bali. Why not, right? Why not? Think big, think different. Um, you know, Vision is one of those close friends where I'm sure you all have a close friend where... You live in the same city. You only see each other once a year, but when you see each other that, that one moment, it, it's, 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 it's just magical and it's incredible. And, and Vishen is one of my closest friends, and so I'm really happy to be here and, and be part of this tribe. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the journaling, you know, it's, it's, I've been a huge... You know, Vishen has been a huge influence in my life. Um, a lot of the Tony Robbins material has, has been hugely influential. And, you know, I, I, I read once somewhere that people who write down their goals and had been proven, you know, had a far greater, greater chance of achieving their goals as opposed to people who would just think about it and think, oh, well, I want to have a nice house or a nice car and a beautiful family versus the people who actually wrote it down somewhere in a journal or in a Word document or, or put it on a poster on the wall. And, and so what I did about 10 years ago is I started, um, it's quite interesting, I started journaling and sometimes I would do it in, in a notebook. Sometimes I'd do it in my laptop. And I would literally, for the first few sessions, I would write down and complain about all the things in my life. that I, Like, I hated my body. I hated, my, you know, uh, that my business was small. I hated that we lived in KL. Like, you know, why didn't we live in a cool city like New York or whatever, whatever. And, and once I, it was kind of like, at least once I got all that negative energy out of the journaling process, then I started thinking, hey, you know what? why don't I start journaling about what do I actually want out of my life? And so I started right now, okay, I want to live in a better home. I want to have an amazing relationship with every member of my family. I want to have amazing friends like Vision. Maybe I don't see them every week or every month. Maybe I see them once a year, but we're still the closest of friends. I want to be able to travel. Maybe I live in Kale. Let me find great things about Kale. But at the same time, let me travel to great cities that inspire me. And, and, and so what happened is that number one was... I started using the journal to complain. And once I got that out of my system, then I started using the journal to envision like, what it was I wanted to get out of my life. And then I think where I made the biggest breakthrough, and that was kind of around the time I was home, is that I wasn't using the journal no longer to write down what I wanted. I was, writing, I was using the journal process to write down how do I get what I want. And I think that was the biggest breakthrough that I had, whereas, and you think about it a lot, is that a lot of people, when they're thinking in their mind, they're always asking themselves, why? Why did this happen to me? Why am I not happy with my body? Why am I not happy with my bank account? Why don't I go on great holidays like all those people on Instagram that I follow? Why don't I have great, cool, inspirational friends? And once you stopped using why as the beginning of every question that you ask yourself and started replacing it with how, and then I, was, then I started using the journal process how do I have more inspirational friends? How do I go on more inspirational holidays? How do I have a better body? How, like, how do I have closer relationships with my brother, my mother, my father, my friends, and so on? And, and so when you saw me that day, <clears throat> the question that I was trying to answer myself was I was like, it, it, and it was funny, it was more, it was more kind of, it's kind of like going to the seminar. Sometimes you need to step outside your comfort zone and just kind of shock the system and do something different. And you know, that's why I'm wearing a flower on my head. That's, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm wearing football. Like you just sometimes need to deliberately do something different because then your mind starts to think differently. And so when you saw me, it was really cute, is that Starbucks that you saw me at was not a Starbucks that I normally go to at all. So I deliberately went to a different Starbucks. I deliberately bought a new notebook. And I started with, how do I make $100 million in 12 months? And when I first started the back to the point, like how? It was not why don't I have $100 right. million, like how do I get $100 million? And I thought, let me be really cheeky with myself and say, in 12 months. And that's when you saw me. And by the time when you saw me, I also thought it was a crazy, crazy thing to try and do. But the funny thing is that by doing three or four sessions like that, I actually figured out a way to do it and then ended up doing it, which was just a great, so when you saw me, I, I had no hope or belief whatsoever that it was possible, but it was just like a fun thing to do. Like, you could, I could watch something on Netflix, I could go to the cinema, or I could just sit in a cool cafe and try and solve this ridiculous, crazy question. And what surprised me is that the more and more I did these kind of 
exercise, I would start to solve these problems. How often do you do these exercises? I'm going to freak you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to show you my calendar from last month. Oh, sorry, last week. So this is, this, is, this is my calendar for this week. Uh -huh. This is my calendar for last week. See the red ones? Right. That's when I'm on a plane. Holy shit, you travel a lot. So you're doing this exercise every time when you're on a plane? So then check out what I actually put in my calendar. Click on that. What does that say? 10 BN session. What does that mean? So I actually put in my calendar when I'm on a plane for one hour, and I haven't figured this out yet, but it's such a fun exercise. It's like, how do I make $10 billion in two years? <laughs> and is that, it's actually in so my diary. So it's a 10 BN session. And 10... I call it a 10 BN session, and... I, how I do you make $10 billion dollars in two, in two years? years? I have no fucking idea how to do it, so don't, okay. so don't ask so, me. But, but it's just such a fun process to try and figure it out. Holy shit, this is bold. Now I'm starting to feel like I'm playing too small again. <laughs> okay, so, but, so you started, you started with I mean, writing down. If you want, we can talk about the blog side. Like, I felt really <laughs> bad. That, like, so we started uh, out with $100 million. Yeah. You pulled it off with, car, with ICAR, yeah. ICAR Asia. Uh, how long was that from writing it down to actually making it happen? Around five years, right? No, like, like that, that time we saw this topic, like journaling session, it was probably four or five sessions like that. Okay. So I would do a session every week. I put it, and what was key is, so a few things I learned were key. I mean, journaling is great and amazing. You can either write or you can type whatever you like. Um, and it was key to start with a how question, not a, not a why question. Right. Start with a how question. And the other key thing is put it in your freaking diary because we're all lazy, we all, we all want to do something that's fun and instantly rewarding, and, and it's hard to sit in the cafe and go, how am I going to solve this great, crazy question? So you saw, like, I literally put it in my diary. It's like the same, like, you put a gym session in your diary, or you put, like, a phone call with someone important. Like, if you don't put, for me, if I don't put it in my diary, and I'm, I'm, I'm just incredibly ADD, it just doesn't happen. Right. So I put it in my diary, and, and what I found was that, usually about if you do four or five sessions, you start to get, like, crystal clear clarity on how to solve a big question. That's, and then, that's amazing. And then, and, then, and then it's how to do it, and it's kind of like what you said the other day. It's like writing down a four or five page plan, now, and then it's getting out there and executing the plan takes, in that case, took 12 months. Okay, so you started out with 100 billion in one year. Sorry, 100 million in 100 one million, year. You executed yeah. that. I believe you then upped the goal, from what I remember from our conversations yeah. over drinks, you upped the goal to 1 billion yeah. in 12 months. Yeah. Did that happen? Um, it did, no, it didn't happen completely, uh, but, it, but it came super close. What, what was the super close? Um, so we started a company called iFlix, and you know, literally within two years of starting the company, you know, the company was worth five, six hundred million dollars within 24 months of starting the company. Got it. So, and, and, but what was interesting is, is that when, you know, when, I when I was doing the journaling for iFlix, you know, I literally set myself the goal of, how do I make this a billion dollar company? How do I make this like within 24 months? And, and at the time, I thought it was crazy, but I thought, you know what, like, if I'm not going to be crazy, I'm never going to figure this out. If I just keep doing right. the same thing that every other entrepreneur does, then, then I'm never going to get a crazy outsized result. And what was interesting is that we came up with a crazy plan, shared it with the team, you know, they got behind it. And, and, and so to the point, what was funny is that we didn't hit the billion dollar goal, but we hit a $500 million goal. Man, man damn, that's pretty damn good to hit the goal. So, so one of the things like you read, like sometimes like set the goal so far, like, ahead that even though if, even if you only hit half your goal it's still pretty damn good achievement right it's like that quote aim for the stars and maybe you'll land on the moon correct yeah that's 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 remarkable so you <laughs> set a goal for two billion in uh one billion in 12 months correct. you hit 24 months yeah and you hit 500 million in 24 months correct cool that's still pretty impressive yeah, not too bad. I've, Try hard I've, next I've, time. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I need so a, Patrick, I need um, a new Starbucks, and um, and so that's why now I've upped the number to tell me. I like look in my mind. I'm not sitting here and just go like I'm not. I don't get turned on by having ten billion dollars in the right. bank. Like I like I just get turned on by setting myself a big crazy goal and and proving myself to myself that I can actually figure out how to achieve that goal. This, and this is kind of how you play the game of life. It's, mm. it's some people, their goal is to climb mountains. Your goal is to take companies public. I believe right now you have taken five companies public. Correct. Now, there was a moment, though, mm. when the dot-com bubble burst, yep. when you had started. So Patrick started a search engine in Asia. Yep. Um, I believe it was called Catcher. Yep. Catcher, and when the dot-com bubble burst, he basically was on the verge of losing everything. Tell us that story, how you rebounded, because that's a pretty cool story. Um, okay. Um, 
So 1999, first dot-com crash, 24 years old. Um, we had a company with 300 employees across five countries. We'd raised $20 million from, from investors. I'd convinced my mom to invest her life savings in the business. Stock market crashes. Um, even though we'd raised $20 million, um, you know, because when you're young and, and, and you're 24 years old, your whole team is staffed with a bunch of 24 years old. So, a 24 year old. So, the CEO, me, 24 years old, my CFO, 23 years old. One tip is never have a 23 year old CFO <laughs> ever again. Um, so, anyway, so, so when the market crashes, um, I look at him and I'm like, so what's the, like, what's the financial situation? He's got, oh, I got good news and I got bad news for you. I'm like, okay, what's the good news? He's like, we have $2 million in the bank. I was like, okay, well, we started with 20 and now we have two. Okay, that's the good news. What's the bad news? He goes, we owe people $6 million. <laughs> it's like, fuck. It's like, okay, never again hire your good friend and a who's 23 years old as a CFO. And so what happened is then we woke up one day literally with $4 million in debt. Um, the three, whatever, 300 staff went to 30 staff within wow. one afternoon. We had to cut four countries, cut all the staff. Uh, you know, it's really tough saying, I'm like, I'm really sorry. Like, I don't know what's happened to your life savings. Um, you know, I was in a really dark place. You know, I would go to bed every night, literally hoping that like my building that I lived in would blow up while I, while I was asleep. Like I wouldn't have to wake up to face the world tomorrow. And, and so what was really interesting is, is um, it was Saturday night at, um, I think it was like whatever, 9.30. I was in the bookstore on Saturday night and I stumbled across a book called Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. How many of you know Anthony Robbins? Yeah. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And I stumbled across a book called Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. And at the time, I didn't have any money. So, and I was sorry, so what I would do is I would go to the bookstore and I would like hide in a little corner. This was a big bookstore back in the days when they still had bookstores. And I would just sit in a little corner of the bookstore and I would try to read as much of the book as I could in the bookstore so I didn't have to buy the book. And, and I didn't realize, it, was, it, it, it came midnight and I didn't realize that they had literally shut down the bookstore. They were cleaning up the bookstore. They turned off most of the lights. And I was literally almost reading in the dark. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to be stuck in the bookstore. <laughs> and so I ended up reluctantly buying the book, um, bought the book, went home, read it like, for a few, like literally, it was one of those, you know, you ever have a book where you just can't, you just can't put it down. And the book was kind of exactly what I needed at that point in time because I, ha I hadn't given up but I, I just didn't have the mental and the physical strength to keep going anymore. Like, you know, my dream had to be an entrepreneur and I'd seen that completely collapse. I was on the front page of the newspaper, you know, there was literally a headline saying, dot com bust, big photo of me. Um, and you know, my poor mother had lost her li life savings backing wow. me. And, and so you, like, you just didn't have the mental strength or clarity to even like, how the fuck do you get out of this? And then I read the book and you know, straight away, it just, it just gave me such a great blueprint on how to be more effective in the way that you use your brain, the way that you vision things, the questions that you ask, the way you communicate with yourself, the, the, way, the, the body language that you use, the way that you surround yourself with other inspirational people. And it was just, it was literally a how-to guide for how to basically train your brain to be better in shitty situations. And I literally went from there and executed everything. And kind of over an eight-year period, you know, now we have 3,000 people across 30 countries. Wow. My mom got back all her savings. Um, <clears throat> you know, and it's just been such a beautiful experience. So that was one of the key things. And so you went on from there, from feeling like a complete failure yeah. to going on to start to, to take five companies IPO. Correct. One, I know, iProperty, you yep. sold to Rupert Murdoch for like what, 700 million Singapore dollars? Correct, about 750 million Australian dollars, yeah. Okay. That, that's remarkable. So you're still the chairman of four public companies? Correct, yeah. How do you manage that? Um, <laughs> not easy. Um, <clears throat> no, but I'm, but, but I'm serious. You're the chairman. Keep this in mind. Yeah. He's the chairman of four public companies, collectively worth over a billion dollars. Um, you're here in Bali, mm. and you've been in Bali for a while. The last time I saw you, you were at your villa in Bali. Yeah. You're here with a flower in your hair and flip-flops. Uh, yep, Most chairman yep. I know are aging progressively faster, have oh. lost most of their hair, and oh. are permanently shaking. You're hanging out with the wrong chairman. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, and, and to the point, one of the reasons why I'm in Bali, one of the reasons why, you know, I'm, I, thank you for inviting me and, 
It's great. Is that, you know, I'm a big believer in that, is that you get so much energy and inspiration by surrounding yourself, and you use the great word, the right tribe. And, and so one of the things, you know, why I come to Bali is, is to surround myself in such a beautiful, holistic environment where, you know, it, it allows my brain to become free and start to think about bigger, better, great, creative things. Whereas you're stuck in the day-to-day -day of life. So it's sometimes hard to break free to the point earlier, why do I do my big vision exercises on planes? I don't get distracted. I, go, I don't get emailed. I don't get WhatsApp. I don't, you don't get dragged into a meeting. So for me, Bali's one of the places where you literally, you get out of your comfort zone. And I feel like to mentally get out of your comfort zone, you need to physically get out of your comfort zone as well. And I think, you know, one of the things I learned from Patrick is that if you're solving a problem, you're solving a mm. problem, right? And often, it takes the same amount of, of genius to solve a small problem versus a big problem. Correct, yeah. And so you can set a goal to create a million dollar company, and it re might require the same amount of genius faculties to get there mm. as setting a goal to start a billion dollar company. It, and, and here's what I mean. Tell us the story of how you start a public company and then you immediately spin it off and how you get the right person to run it okay. by poaching the comp competition. That was genius. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so, I mean, one of the things, I mean, I, and I, I think I'm sure everyone's like, I'm, I mean, how many of you are CEOs or entrepreneurs in this room? Okay, beautiful. What a great tribe. Um, I think one of the things that you need to do as a leader is you need to get really crystal clear, uh, you know, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And I think in the beginning, and I had this mistake, I thought I could be great at everything, and, 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 I, and I could do everything and would do it. And then you need to learn over time, you're like, you know what? I'm really, really good at certain things, and there's other things that I'm kind of average at, and there's other things I'm really bad at. And so one of the things that I learned early on, is, and particularly that process when the company almost went bust and I had to reflect, <clears throat> my partners and I, and it's always great when you can do this together with, with a business partner, we started to say, hey, you know what? what? What do we think as individuals we can be world best at? And let's just do that. And everything else that we're not world, we might be Malaysia best at or Asia best at, but if we're not world's best at a certain thing, mm -hmm. like, let's not do it. Let's hire someone to do it. Let's find someone else who is world's best at. So, <clears throat> so, with, so with the example of, of iProperty, when we, it was the first kind of company that we built. We floated on the stock market. Um, and, and just to define, iProperty yeah. is a big property listing website where you put <clears throat> up your properties for rent or for sale. Yeah, and... You know, for the first two years, we ran it. I was chairman. My other business partner was CEO. But we kind of, it was almost like CEO, COO kind of relationship. And we thought, oh, we can do this ourselves. We're young. We're hungry. We work hard. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> and then what, what happened was that a big company in Australia um, would, you know, they were worth like $700 million. We were worth $20 million at the time. And they would always trash talk us in the press, trash talk us to fund managers and analysts. They, they were literally trying to starve off our funding so that we would just die. And, um, and then what, what happened is that we had been running the business for two years and we were kind of, we were kind of doing a, like, if we were to give ourselves a report card, we were, we were a B at, at managing a company. Was we were like an A at putting together pieces and building energy and strategy and so on, but we were a B at running a company. <clears throat> so what happened is that this company that was bigger than us and was trash talking us like every opportunity they got, um, what happened was that the, the shareholders and the CEO and the CEO had a little bit of a disagreement uh, on salary package and it became quite public. So I literally straight away went on to MSN Messenger at the time, this is quite a while ago, and reached out to the CEO and go, hey. Um, you reached out to the CEO. I reached the CEO. The CEO. <clears throat> and said, hey, I, I, you know, you're not happy with your package. Do you want to join us? We'll, we'll, give, we'll give you a better package. And he was like, get fucked, why would I join you? <laughs> so I was like, and, and he was paid like $3 million a year and our company was only worth like $30 million. So I was like, okay. So then I went to the COO. Hey, <laughs> <clears throat> do you want to join us? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, get fucked, I'm about to be the CEO. That's what he was thinking. He's like, he's like no, 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 thanks. And you know, he was getting paid like $1 million a year. So then this, country, this company was in four countries. Then I found the GM of Australia. I was like, yo. <laughs> you want, and, and then this time I did my real, I was like, how much is this guy paid? I'm like, okay, I just need to offer a little bit more. I'm like, yo, you would like to join? It's like, I'll pay you the same thing. I'll pay for your family, move to Malaysia. Um, we'll give you shitloads of options in the company. Would you like to move to Malaysia? And he goes, yeah, I need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like summarizing like a lot of chats into one, but 
And you know what? And he moved to Malaysia. And you've met him. It's Sean. Uh, Sean. And, and he moved to Malaysia. And at that time, we, we were kind of being cheeky. We go, I'll be the chairman. My best friend will be the CEO. And he'll be the COO. And literally, uh, and as part of the interview, because we were, we were a little bit cheeky, so part of the interview, we said, oh, well, you've got to come for an interview. You've got to meet the other guys. Like, there's no other guys, but we always say that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you've got to come and present your... Uh, like, what would you do? What would be your 90-day plan? What would be your one-year plan? What would be your five-year plan? And, and our, our view was that if he wasn't the right guy, at least we'd get the plan. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so he came over. His CEO didn't know and his chairman didn't know. Oh, CEO, because, you know, he's, he wasn't sure how that shakeout above him was going to end up. He came, and the plan that he presented was, like, so freaking good. We're just like, we've got to close this guy on the spot. Uh, and, but, but when he went through the plan, he started to realize that his plan and his ability to execute the plan would be far better than if I spent 48 hours a day trying to build that business. And that's when I realized that there really are people who are better than you at certain different things that you're doing. And, and here's the thing, you know, at the time we were paying ourselves, I don't know, like $100,000 a year, and he was going to be paid $500,000 a year. But, but if you start thinking about it from an entrepreneurial or share high mindset, like, if we have a company worth $30 million a year and I've got to step out of my comfort zone to go from paying my best friend 100 k a year to paying this guy 500 k a year, but he made the company go from $30 million to $700 million? Man, that's like the best investment any day of the week. $30 million to $700 million. Yeah, what, 750 What time span? Over six, seven years. Six, seven years. And I remember during that time, I bumped <clears throat> into you in a bar. Yeah. And you came to me and you're like, Vision, fuck, I'm so disappointed. And I'm like, Patrick, what happened? You're like, I put so much of my money in Apple stock because Apple stock is always growing and it's so predictable. But have you seen my own company? It's overtaken Apple stock in terms of growth this year. I should have just invested in my own company. Do you remember that? I, I, I do remember that. <clears throat> <clears throat> and um, hmm. Anyway, tell me, tell me about your blog. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how, how's it? How's it? We'll come to that. Okay, okay. We'll come to that. I, I yeah. think you might find that idea pretty fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so now tell us about iFlix. What are you looking at? Okay. So with iFlix, you're looking at competing with Netflix, yeah. which is no freaking joke yeah. in the developing world. Yeah, true. So, I mean, what, you know, what, I mean, a simple premise, and I mean, I mean, this is a very Western-skewed audience, but what we found in a lot of the emerging markets like Indonesia, like Philippines, like Thailand, is, is that you know, a few things that most people watch video on their mobile phones... Um, which is a little bit different where America, everyone has a big screen TV. And, and secondly, most people don't want to watch Western content. They, you know, they don't want to watch House of Cards. They don't want to watch Orange is the New Black. They want to watch local original shows, uh, Indonesian shows or Filipino shows or, and so on. And, you know, Netflix or HBO for that matter, you know, doesn't target that audience. So, so we thought, you know, let's go out there and build a big disruptive media business where, and it was really bold because we wanted to disrupt three things at the same time. We just wanted to disrupt free-to-air TV, cable TV, and piracy all at the same time. And we thought if we could do that uh, and, and build a great entertainment platform that sits on the mobile in emerging markets, then we would build a, a great big business. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And you're doing such a great service for local cultural programming <clears throat> as well. Incredible. So it yeah. doesn't get drowned out by, yeah. by just American programming. So congratulations to you. Correct. Right. Next question is, how do you find balance in life? Okay. Because you're a busy guy, but yep. you seem really balanced to me. I go to Starbucks. Um, I go to bar... <laughs> So, so this, is, this is quite interesting. I'm, I'm glad you asked me this. Um, you know, probably in my 20s, I, you know, I was very single-mindedly obsessed with, with creating wealth. And, 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 and it's really funny. Like, if you spend time with me, you'll see that I'm not, I, I, I don't look like someone who has a lot of wealth. And it's not, it was funny. It took me a while to realize that it wasn't actually the, the, the actual money in my bank account that I was seeking. It was, it was more the kind of alpha male competitiveness against alpha males and that that kind of ranking, like how big is your company versus your company? And, and that's what I was seeking. And in my 20s, it was very kind of about that. And then, you know, kind of there was a moment one day when I woke up and, and you realize that, that, hey, I haven't seen my dad in like nine months. Uh, I haven't spoken to my brother in six months. Um, like, like, I don't even know who my best friend is. Like, do I even have one? Um, I'm not happy with my body. Um, and... You know, I'm not happy with my relationships. And then you start to realize that, like, like, I've just been so focused on wealth creation that, that I'd missed so many other parts 
of life. So what happened then in my 30s, I, I kind of used the journaling pro process to kind of evolve the way that I create balance. And one of the things that I do is I still use the journal process. And, and because I'm ADD and I need the thing structured and simple, or I'm going to forget it or get distracted, is that I created this thing, and I don't know if I've ever told you this, called the six Fs. So I broke down my goals into what I call six Fs. So it's so easy. I can be, <clears throat> I can be like at an airport terminal waiting for a flight, which as you saw my schedule, there's like a flight every day. And, and like I quickly mentally go through my mind, my six Fs. And, and so what I've done is I, I've broken down, I've determined that for me to be balanced, I need to be happy with my progress on each of the six Fs. And so the six Fs, you know, are number one is finance, um, number two, family, number three, friends, number four, fitness, number five, figurehead. So if you're like, I want to share and I want to help others. And number six, most importantly, and you appreciate this, is fun. So, <clears throat> so six Fs, and I just, it's like a mental check that I go through, like, okay, like, what am I doing about my finance goal? Okay, what am I doing about my fitness goal? What am I doing about my fun goal? You know, and that's come to Bali, come to this event. What am I doing about uh, my figurehead goal? You know, one day I'm going to talk to you about writing a blog and how to create a great blog site. And, and, and so what I found was that as the journal process, when you go through the journal process and like, like how, so then I'd come to family goal and be like, okay, how, how can I be a better son? How can I be a better brother? And then, then one of the students was like, okay, I'm going to organize a, a group holiday in Bali. And that's one of the why, another reason why Bali was special to me, because it was that one place where I could get everyone in my family who live all over the world to come for one week. And that was incredibly special for me. And so what I found was that, and because I'm a kind of a goal-orientated machine, that once I started making sure that I had balanced goals in each of those six Fs, that, that the same intensity that you saw me in that, right. how do I make $100 million, it's the same as how do I make sure that everyone in my family speaks to every, everyone else once a month, or, or, you know, or crazy shit like that. It seems like your mind <clears throat> just needs to solve problems in a beautiful way. Yeah. And you're solving problems for everyone, including your family. I really mm. appreciate how much you care. Side story about Patrick. Patrick, I'd originally asked him months ago to speak at the Safe Fest, but he had gone for surgery. Um, and his voice was, he was having some difficulty with his voice, so he wasn't, he couldn't commit. Mm. And as soon as he healed himself, he WhatsApp me and said, hey, I'm going to be in Bali, let me know how I can contribute, and this is why he's here. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Repeat the six Fs for okay. people who are interested. <clears throat> so what, what I would say is, and I, 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 I'm so similar to you, like, I, like, I don't want to get on a stage and share my story. I don't, I don't think my story is that important. It's, it's, I, I, w I would love that if I can make a really, really small difference for some of the people in this room, and if I get just like a little nugget, of, I would say, like, however you schedule your life, whether it's in your phone or like, commit right now, put, put, put a marker in your calendar, like, whether it's the flight back, whether it's tomorrow on the beach, and just block out a one hour schedule. If you can block out one hour to go to the gym, if you can block out one hour to watch something on Netflix, block out one hour for yourself and start, and just start journaling. And whether you use the five F6, like, I don't care what system you use, just, if, if you've never journaled, then just first get out all the bullshit in your life in the journal and then start to, like, what do you want out of life? And then start to, how do I get that in life? Put on some good music, go to a beautiful place, and, I think, and just commit to just do one session in a cool cafe somewhere. And I think that you'll start to get addicted to it and you'll find it such a beautiful therapeutic experience. And what you start to find, which is really beautiful, you start to write the story of your life. And, I, and I'll tell you what's been mind blowing because I've been doing this process now for... 10 years, sometimes I would, I would write like, and I'd be like, okay, what is like, what does Patrick's life in 10 years look like? And I just write it, blah, 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 like just crap, right? Like, and, and it's so freaking scary because I'd go back and read what I wrote and like, it's like a 90% success rate. Like all the crazy things that I've written down have actually ended up coming into my life. Is there a mindset or some sort of philosophy <clears throat> that you have internally that you think is making that come to you so rapidly? Yeah, I, I think what it is, and I think a lot of, and like if you've watched The Secret, it says, like, just think about it, think about it, think about it. And I, I think for me, it was like, I, I felt that there was more than just thinking about envisioning, like just imagining great things. I mean, w w to me, it was, it was more, and what I said, like the how, like ask yourself the how question. Like it's, like if you watch The Secret, and then it says, oh, just, just think about having the world, the most amazing career. And like if you just think, 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 
Right. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure what you what what what, what you we share. But I'm not a big believer in just thinking and then it happens. I'm more a more an action orientated person and saying, okay, I think about it. So now it's in my soul and my mind as to what I want. But more importantly, how the f do I actually make it happen? And, and and I think too many people just think 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 and like and just kind of waiting, waiting for the lottery ticket to to like hit me and and waiting for that customer to say yes or waiting for this amazing partner to walk in my life. But I feel like you got to you. You got to take action, and I think just by religiously asking yourself, "How, how, how do I have a better body? How do I have better people in my life? How do I go on amazing holidays? How do I learn as much as I can out of this session? How do I have a great time tonight and meet three awesome people that are going to be best friends?" I think if you just keep asking yourself, "How," then I think your mind, your body, and your soul will solve those answers. Amazing. And Patrick wasn't even here yesterday when we spoke about the Google and Intel philosophy of OKRs, but that's the how. Can you guys see how OKRs take your vision and reduce it to what you need to do this quarter, business-wise or personal-wise, to hit the targets and gives you measurable goals? Everybody got that? That how process, <clears throat> what I recommend is the OKRs and definitely the journaling and the setting time aside process that Patrick talks about. Interestingly, Patrick, mm. you were not um, aware of the conversation I was just recommending with Cameron Harrell, right, the podcast mm. episode, but it's eerie how much of an overlap. Really? Cameron Harrell suggests, as I said, that you take time off, get in a boat, get out of the office, open up a journal, and write your vivid vision. And he doesn't have six Fs, but he talks about, I kid you not, five Fs. Uh, okay. Fate, family, friends, finance, fitness. Fate, family, friends, finance, fitness. Sounds like a boring guy. Where's the fun? <laughs> right. And, and then Patrick adds two more. Is he, I hope he's not in this room. If he, if he, if he, if he. So no, it, it doesn't, it, and it doesn't matter what the Fs are. Like it just, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you can, you, you can take Cameron Harrell's five Fs, add is, Patrick's is, fun is, and figure ahead. You he, now have seven Fs. Go is wild. No, he's, uh, okay. he's not here. Okay. But, uh, but I bet you someone um, here knows him and is WhatsApping him right now. What, what I would say is, is, is please just book an hour with yourself. It's, it's go to a cool cafe, put on a good music set that you like to listen to, and I'm easy to add on Instagram, and just do it and t tell, me, tell me if you liked it. Just like, because I'm curious to know, like it works for me, and I'm not trying to sell this on the world, but I'm just really, really curious to know if it works for other people. How do we follow you on Instagram? Just add Patrick Grove, and you can just message me directly. It's super easy. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. Cool. Thank you, man. Take care, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming here. Please give a big round of applause to Patrick Grove. Thank you. Thank you.